What's going on everybody? So to the left we have the Sony A8G and to the right we have the Samsung Q8FN. Now this was a popular, popular uh, little comparison that you guys were requesting. So we're gonna be doing this one with a lot of these movie stuff so you can see what it is and yeah, pretty simple stuff here. So the first thing I want you guys to be mindful of is that again, this is going to be a comparison. So again, if your TV doesn't win, you know, I'm just gonna do a play-by-play. -play. It's not uh, it's not throwing shade at any TV. Um, that being said, the camera might also move around a bit. I have it kind of stabilized here on my bed. I can't use a tripod because of the distance and the size of both of these TVs. Now, that being said, if you see some shake, just, again, deal with it, kind of hang with it, you know what I mean? It, it, it's a comparison, right? Just get use the audio. I know it's probably shaking around right now. Now, that being said, if I'm looking at these two images right now, the blue on the Q8FN is just incredible. Day and night better. I love the shadows. I love the warmth of the, the toy. But what I'm noticing is you're lacking shades of blue. So if you look near the strip at the bottom, you're missing uh, uh, that shade of uh, light, almost like a lighter blue on the Q8FN where it's just all one shade of blue. So that's kind of unfortunate there that the color accuracy isn't there. But overall color, I mean, both look pretty good. So let's let the scene continue to progress out. Now it's that brightness of the Q8FN that's really grabbing my eye right now. Um, as again, we're just going into these scenes, that extra luminosity is just making a world of difference right now. Like it's huge, it's a big difference. Now if we pause this scene here and we look at uh, shadow casting and rendering, they're honestly about the same, a slight edge to the Q8FN because it's creating a better difference between contrast because it can get brighter. So that kind of stuff is a lot more fun. Um, but ultimately it's amazing how Again, close these TVs do look. Now, obviously for color, the Q8FN is just dominating as far as the vibrancy and overall rendition because again, those quantum dots that Samsung fed their 2018 TVs were the real deal. Uh, the 2019 ones, no, I'm not gonna tell you that they are the real deal and I mean, the results could vary, but I can tell you right now, like just pausing right here, looking at both these images, they look good. I like the binoculars on the A8G better. The shade of blue is more enjoyable, though I like the red better on the uh, QLED. So it just really depends, I suppose. But I don't want to pause too long because when I do that, it, it makes these videos drag out. So I'm going to try to let the scene play out and just kind of call it as I see it. Now, colors looking way better on the uh, QLED right now by a mile. Um, like there's no way about it. Samsung is whooping the OLED's ass right now when we're talking about color. Um, you talk about detail, they're about the same. Um, upon first glance, the Samsung actually is looking better and sharper. For uh, contrast and detail, black levels are darker because again, it's not trying to open up shadow detail to combat the natural black crush that exists on OLED. And again, this TV does a great job, the A8G, with eliminating that, but that does come at a cost of, again, you're not able to get, I mean, my God, that was just incredible. So I, I actually have to pause that one and run that one back. Uh, it's, it's when you look at the, the shadow being casted right here on Woody's face, as you see like the light, compared to the uh, AAG, it, it just wraps around so good and it, it creates this dimensionality out of it. And then you look at Buzz Lightyear's helmet and you see the reflections, the ambient light popping off of that. And then you look at, again, all the little buttons on Buzz Lightyear's little outfit there, way more vibrant than what you're getting on the Sony. Though Woody's hat on the Sony looks better and the skin tones are better on the Sony. So that is something to point out there. Uh, an argument could be made for the wallpaper being more realistic to the sky blue, uh, but really at that point, it's just kind of like being really picky because if the scene's playing out like this, you're not really gonna notice that kind of difference. You will, however, immediately notice this difference in brightness. Like, my eye is just going straight to the Samsung. And now I wanna point this out. Say whatever some professional reviewers, Vincent Teo, by the way, it says about over-brightening, but there's something to be said about my eye gravitating towards a television. If my eye does that, chances are that's what my eye wants to see. So that's all I'll say there. But what I will say is this is just downright incredible. They both look good. I mean, I don't have a problem with either one of them. Though, if I had to pick so far which one I like more, I do like the look of the QLED better, most definitely. Um, the reds, the blues, the greens, all the primaries are obviously better because it's true RGB. And then that quantum dot with the brightness behind this thing is just incredible. I mean, right now, I mean, Sony does have good color accuracy though. Like right there, when those balloons were flying up, that was really great. But now like right here, it's back to the Q8FN for color. And I don't think that's gonna change throughout this entire thing. Um, so I think that probably will be one of the things I can 
kind of already see as a reoccurring theme here. Sony does tend to have the better blue though, because it is a WRGB display. And with it being a WRGB display, you guys know that increases color accuracy of blue. Um, problem is though, whites do tend to look blue. So that's again, you, you know, you're winning and then you're losing. So I don't know, it's, it's one of those kind of things. Now this looks way better on OLED as we just started up. Wally looking way more realistic. The warmth is a lot better on OLED right now like by a lot, but then you get into the colors and the blue again, uh, it's starting to look better now on the uh, Sony, or I'm sorry, on the Samsung Q8FM. I will mix these names up by the way, so just kind of bear with it, um, only human after all. And uh, looking at Eva's eyes, like I, I like the Q8 way better because it's darker, it's richer, it has that look, right? Now, as she's firing off these laser blasts, I mean, the laser blasts themselves look fine, but the contrast of the Q8FN is definitely exceeding OLED right now. OLED shadow detail was just a little too open for my liking on that particular scene there. So we're gonna dive into another one here. I usually let this one play just so we can kind of see the differences here. Um, I mean, it's hard, man. The Q8 is just really dominating right now. I mean, you wanna give OLED something. I'm sure once we get into the darker scenes, we'll see more, but right now, it's not going so great, right? Um, let's, let's, try to, let's try to see if uh, we can see something else here. There we go. So now we're in a scene where OLED finally looks better, right? Like this scene here, it looks really, really good for the shade of blue. Uh, the rings around Saturn look very nice. I feel like the color accuracy is significantly better now on the OLED, but the shades of color are more impressive on the QLED. And ultimately my eyes are immediately honing in on that QLED because I mean, the Q8FN is just grabbing my attention. Though the color accuracy though, all the richness behind the yellows and, and uh, this TV, by the way, the AEG, does really good with yellows. And surprisingly, it's holding its own quite well to the Q8FN with the color red. Now, why that's important to mention is this is the same LG panel. Um, I mean, really, I, 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 I have to run that back. I'm in the middle of like trying to explain something and then like something happens that I, I gotta show you guys. All right, so let's let this play out here. And I want you guys to pay attention. Look at how the peak brightness just plummets just there when they do this explosion here. I mean, it is massive right about here. That just dimmed so poorly, like it was crazy. And that's that's that 100 and like 90 to 150 to 190, whatever it is, uh, limitation kicking in through your ABL. And that's why I say explosions are gonna look better on QLED. So again, you're getting color accuracy, but you know, it does come at a cost you know, brightness and things like that. Also, not the, great, not the greatest here, but it does look good. Now, what I was saying about the reds before I kind of got lost in thought there, um, the reds are holding up incredibly well to this QLED, like incredibly well, because, I mean, LG has sour reds that will not change on any of the newer OLEDs. You have to really put in a lot of calibration work. Sony is just coming out of the box like this. All you gotta do is just plug it into HDMI two or four. And I must specify two or four, because if you put it in one, or, or I'm sorry, two or three, because if you put it in one or four, then you're going to run into the sour yellows that you see on LG and this TV will be virtually unwatchable, which that could be a deal breaker for some people right there as well. I mean, either way, they both look really good. Now we're in a darker scene here and it's important to note, like the LG would normally be like black crushing. You know, I say LG because I'm, I'm thinking like this is an LG panel, this is an LG, but this is the AAG. Um, but now it's important to understand, as I look at the Sony, the Sony is giving off better detail right now, better color. It's kind of a win for Sony right now because if, as I pause and look at this image, the gerbil is a little more flat by comparison in this darker scene. Um, I'm noticing a little bit more in the way of haze and all that good stuff. So it just depends. But I mean, tomato, tomato, I guess. But right now for the darker scene, I am liking the OLED better because again, I'm able to see every little detail where QLED's not able to do all of that. Though I will say when the fire kicks in, that's when it starts looking so much better on the Samsung Q8 FN for sure. But overall, I'm gonna give this scene to OLED because this is looking really impressive in my eye now is gravitating towards OLED. And one of the impressive things with OLED is that when things get really dark like that scene we just saw there, it has this like pixel thing where again, you are getting a pixel level representation of items and it looks really good. Now, every time I'm making a point, I see something fascinating. I'm sorry guys, but it's really hard to do live comparisons because A, I haven't done this particular comparison before and B, I mean, as I see it, I'm blown away. I'm only human, right? But guys, looking at this, these two images right now look so identical. It's almost scary. Now, why this is being mentioned right now, I see some clipping on my end. I'm gonna try to lower that a bit. 
Uh, why is this is so Im amazing to me right now? Actually, I I'll let it go through because it's only in the brightest areas. I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. Um, but it, it, it looks like they're almost twins, and it's impressive because, again, this is not a Quantum.TV, this OLED. It's just an OLED, and typically OLEDs have significantly more washed out color. Where here, it's going toe to toe with the Q8FN of all TVs, which is a king of color. Like, I mean, really, it's, it's really impressive. I mean, they look so very identical right now. Like, I'm mind boggled. And the Q8FN obviously edging out in color. The color is definitely looking really, really good. But looking at the OLED, it's not lagging so far behind that I'm like, wow, this is so far off. And actually right here, these shades of blue right now on the uh, OLED looking better, obviously, because we were talking about earlier WRGB giving that better accuracy of the color blue. I mean, really, though, this is a load of fun to see, though. They look very, very good, both of them. But the Q8 is now edging it out most definitely because that brightness is going to play a factor in all of your scenes. Look at that yellow man on the uh, Q8. Just incredible stuff, really. Now they're running out to the rooftop. OLED's looking better here. The scene's starting to get darker. Uh, contrast is now looking significantly better on the Q8 as we get into these scenes where they start like lowering down for the shadow detail of the overcast day. Now, oddly enough, in this scene, OLED is not taking the cake. Even though it's a dark scene, there are a lot of bright elements. And this is, again, one of the, the kind of myths out there. Like anytime there's something dark on the screen, OLED will always look better. That is false. Because as we're seeing here, the Q8FN not only has brighter uh, colors and brighter uh, you know, overall luminosity, but it also is giving you deeper blacks because that contrast is able to balance out between the light and the dark. And as we know, OLED can't get equally bright as it can dark. So that's really hurting it here in this scene. It still looks good, but nowhere near as good as it's looking on the Q8FN. Now, as we get into this particular scene, I'd say that was about equal from it just playing itself through. They both did look really, really good there. Now for this, they're both opening up and honestly, they look identical yet again. Um, the blue on the QLED though, looking better now for the, the extra shades of green, the brown in the ocean and all that, that did look better. Now I wanna go back to the main menu here and I wanna try to play this one clip so you guys can kinda get an idea of motion. Now what you're gonna have to do at this particular scene is you guys are probably gonna have to go into YouTube and uh, slow the video down at this particular portion. I'm gonna try to remember what it is. I think maybe 27, I'm not sure. Um, let's see if I got it right. I usually don't, not the first try anyway. No, I didn't get it right. Um, it would probably be 28. But you guys have to slow it down. I would say maybe like to, I don't know, 0.1 or whatever it is so you guys can see the motion artifacts and lack thereof or whatever the case may be And this particular scene. Now, the problem with the Sony A8G is that it has a motion problem. You will notice it in almost everything that is fast paced. I was watching Jason Bourne the other night and let me tell you, it was a total mess. Even gave my wife and I a headache. I mean, it's, it's fast paced movies create artifacts on this TV and you're not getting around that. And even as you saw the helicopter just move past there, more artifacts on the Sony. Right now, it's about the same, but more artifacts on the Sony. And if you don't like motion artifacts, you don't like blurry pictures, things that just start getting juddery and jerky, the Sony is not going to be for you, especially if you're considering this for movies. That's the deal breaker here, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat that at all. Um, now, I try to use the 24P AutoSync to smooth that out a bit, and it does help. It's way better than not having it. So the newer Sony, which is the A9G, that doesn't have 24P AutoSync, good luck because it's gonna be really, really rough on you guys not to be able to set that stuff manually. Um, but that being said though, I mean, try to slow this clip down in YouTube at this particular section to see if you can see more judder on the Sony because I definitely did. Now we'll go into the other scene there, 27, uh, that had uh, the little soldiers running on the ground. This will give you an idea in those combat movies what you're gonna be experiencing. And uh, I can safely say on both TVs it looks good. A slight edge towards the Q8FN for color. Um, I mean, really, the brightness is what makes it. And people pretend like the brightness plays no part in your picture, but it does. Um, but again, just try to slow things down, look for the motion and whatever the case may be. But as I look at these two images, I don't know, I would say I like the OLED better because I can see more detail in the jacket and the green is a better shade of green, though I like the red on QLED better. Uh, and the blacks are actually better as well. So as we're just playing these things out, it is what it is. Now, I want to see uh, Nightmare Before Christmas because this one usually is where LEDs do quite poorly. And I want to see if this is something that can be cleaned up a bit. Um, I don't know, by some sort of magic here. 
And right now, yeah, it's definitely looking far more hazier than the OLED right now. There's like a, a hue to it that's like almost hazy. The colors aren't nearly as nice. The shade of blue is almost like a gray, where on OLED you're getting, again, just a better shade of blue. It, it looks a lot better. And the, surprisingly, the red on the nose of the, the ghost dog or whatever, that actually looked equal. It looked about the same to uh, the Q8FN, which is very impressive for an OLED to have not sour reds. Like that's a huge deal for anybody, again, who has not been buying LG OLEDs. They have a problem with the color red. It's like a blood orange. If you don't know what blood orange is, look that color up. It's quite ugly. Um, it's not red at all and it's not accurate. So you have to do a lot of work to get it out of that. But Sony, again, you put it in cinema mode, it's just rocking, man. Now it has to be in the full bandwidth, as I mentioned earlier, but I mean, looking at all this stuff, it's impressive. Now, right now, again, this is this is trading off a bit. I see the black levels on OLED most definitely playing a part as it does get hazier on the Q8FN, only by like a hair. Um, now the colors are completely being edged out on the OLED, or the OLED is edging out the um, Q8FN. As I'm looking, now the Q8 is a little better because of the brightness, but the black levels are just immaculate on the OLED in this scene. This is a total win for OLED right now, and I'm thinking that this whole scene is gonna be for OLED. Now, why am I showing you guys this stuff like uh, as far as like 1080p content? I'm not showing you 4K, I'm showing you animated and a mixed range of stuff. I want you to see colors, I want you to see brightness. Like right now, as we look at these two skies, I think I might have to pause and run that back because I don't think a lot of people know what I really mean when I say that there are some huge differences here. So I wanna try to show you guys that stuff now. So uh, the haze could probably be seen at this ISO, but I'm gonna open it up to, what do you say, about 600, 800. And you can see like the OLED is just black and the QLED has clear haze to it. Now, to be fair to the QLED, the QLED is doing something the OLED cannot do. The OLED is black crushing out very key detail. Like if you look behind the moon, there is a cloud right here that's supposed to be there. On OLED, because they are reading all that information is just black. It is crushing that information out. If I strain my eyes extremely hard, I can see where it is kind of there, but barely. We're on the Q8, even though you don't have this whole black night scene, you are getting that extra detail. So it's not obviously blown out to this great degree. I opened my eyes so quite a bit to show that off, but you guys are getting the idea here, right? So again, those are the differences that you can kind of appreciate when you're talking about movies. Again, whether you like OLED or QLED doesn't matter. I think. It's education about what these things are capable of, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So let's go to my favorite scene here in Pirates of the Caribbean, and uh, we're gonna try to uh, see if we can't uh, see the difference between the shadow detail between both displays. And right now, this is hard. They actually look like the same. The Q8 with better color. I just had a weird little dropout from my HDMI splitter there. It's not the TV there. Uh, I mean, really though, they do look the same like overall I mean the green is more green on the Sony like I'm noticing that black levels are better the haziness on the Q8 definitely more noticeable uh, but the overall picture is the same like right here now contrast is sharper when they got to Davy Jones face it's it's really petty stuff guys like you would barely be able to tell a difference like I mean the only thing you would immediately tell a difference with is probably the black levels but an argument could obviously be made for shadow detail because now you have more shadow detail on the Q8, but now the OLED is looking better because it's darker, colors are punching through a lot harder. Um, let's see. The overall representation is very identical though. I'm not gonna lie. Besides those things I mentioned, this whole scene is looking pretty good on both. I mean, if I had to pick one I would prefer, I, I'd, I'd lean towards OLED only because like we're in this dark scene in this dark cellar or prison cell or whatever and we can see like just so much more as far as like the blacks we're on the Q8 because it's not OLED it's not self emissive so you're not getting that benefit but otherwise those colors were about the same like little nuanced differences right let's do some Monsters Inc stuff right so let's see uh, let's see some of the colors here because this usually is a big difference as well so let's see yeah, so I'm gonna pause right there. It, this is hard, because I like the highlights popping off of uh, the character on the Q8FN to the right, but the blue is just too blue. He doesn't look like that. Like, he's not supposed to look like, that's almost like a, I don't even know what you call that, like a really, really dark sky blue. 
where over on the OLED, that's their benefit. That WRGB, again, looking real good. He actually looks normal. I'm just having a second dropout now for my HDMI splitter, so something to be said about that. Um, maybe I have to replace it or whatever, but. Okay, now the Q8's looking a lot better because that brightness just kicked in and the scene is very dynamic and the OLED is, is still looking good, but it doesn't have that pop, like that this is the TV that I want kind of look. And that, that's when you look at both of them. Now, to be fair, full disclosure, I own both these TVs. Both these TVs are mine to keep. I mean, like, you know what I mean? But if you had to make that call between these two TVs, I mean, it's not an easy thing to do, I guess. But I mean, the edge for a scene like this does kind of go towards the Q8 FN, except for the blue. Because the blue was pretty bad. That was pretty off. And what's so, so sucky about the uh, Q8 FN is you can't even calibrate it because their color space management system literally does nothing. I've never seen that before. So it's definitely about the worst on the market right now. Um, now we're gonna see this scene. So black levels obviously going to the OLED. Colors look about the same right now. Uh, darker blue on the Q8. That's a theme that we're seeing here. Let's see, pink in the cheeks about the same, but again, darker blue is really messing up the Q8's look. Mm, I'd give that to the OLED. That, that looked more balance, I guess, on OLED. The darker scenes giving the better shadow in OLED. And I'm really, again, I'm not liking the shade of blue on the Q8 FN, it's just too dark. And I know for a fact on this particular scene, this is supposed to be like a light cyan blue, and I'm not getting that on the Q8. It's rendering completely way off. Though the purple looks nice though on the Q8, so. As the scene continues to progress out, I'm noticing more details obviously in the shadow and things like cloth. Uh, cloth rendering that looks a lot better on the OLED AAG to the left. Going underneath the bed here, about the same detail wise. The purple in the eyes on the Q8 killing the OLED right now. Just absolutely destroying it. Though not by much, man. I, I gotta say, looking at it, they're so close. Like it, 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 this is one of those things that would really kind of piss you off if you paid like two thousand dollars and you you bought a TV like the Sony AAG and then you got a super crazy deal on the Q8 FN. It kind of makes the Q8 FN like a no brainer for a lot of people, but there are little nuanced differences if you're a video file you'd notice. But for most people, it's looking like the Q8 FN is probably going to be the better purchase for the money. Uh, as far as image quality, they're they're about the same, man. I mean, let's look at some Wally -E scenes. I freaking love this movie. It's just pure art, this movie, right? Let's hope it's not the one that loaded up earlier. Yeah, I love this scene. All right, so now in this particular scene, we've got, uh, we've got Eva here lighting the fire. The fire looks so much better on the Q8, but the details are looking better on OLED. So it's hard, like the warmth coming off of Eva's body looks better on OLED, but that fire, man, drawing that eye, man. And, and the, the focal point of the scene is the fire as Wally's being enamored by Eva. And it, the whole idea is to draw you into that dreamy concept. And I feel like the Q8 is capturing that better. I do, because it's, it's honing in on what it's supposed to hone in on. Now looking at her hand, they're equal here. They look about the same. They still look about the same. I mean, the OLED looks better for the black detail now. So that's a win there for OLED. And I'm, can I just say again for the billionth time, I'm literally blown away by the color red on this particular OLED. Like I've said it, but oh my God, like it's so close to Quantum Dot. Like, and seeing it next to the Q8 is really establishing that point. So that's a win for Sony. They should be very proud of what they did there because that's impressive. Looking at this, I mean, really, it's fantastic. Both images so close. And I just want to throw this out there. LG OLED will not be doing this. I know a lot of people are not going to like that comment, but it's true. I've had quite a few, and I don't know what it is about their processing, but you don't get this three-dimensional picture that you're getting on the Sony that you'd get on the OLED. So even though the AAG is doing so good right now, this would be very different with a B9, and I don't recommend you buy that. If for the same two grand, just buy yourself the AAG. It's the better TV for sure. You don't get a nice remote, and the stand and the frame made of complete garbage material in my opinion, but overall, it's the better TV picture quality wise if that's what you're after. Um, but looking at this scene, they're very similar. I mean, right even down to brightness, believe it or not, they're not that bad until we get to this scene, 
where then now obviously OLED's ABL kicked on, but that was pretty impressive. Sony was actually holding its own very well there in that dark scene. So let's go to uh, Up. I love this movie, it's a fantastic movie. Let's see if uh, they got the scene I'm looking for. I'm looking for the one with the thunder. No, not this one, we already saw that one. Let's try to go, because there's this one scene, and, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, this TV does really good with lightning, the A8G, and I wonder if that's gonna be the case here, because I actually never saw this scene, this one right here. All right, let's see it. So the Q8 is looking way off. His face is way too pink. That's the first thing I'm noticing. The OLED's looking better for color accuracy there. Everything's looking really pink in this dark scene and blues are looking like too dark. Though right here, now it looks a little better. Now it looks worse. So far, the OLED is looking better. As the lightning pops off, let's see what it looks like. I'll let you guys know like if it looks bad, I guess, like from what I remember. I like the Q8's colors, but they're not accurate enough. I mean, they're vibrant, but you need accuracy behind that too. And I, I will say the lightning flashes feel every bit as bright as they do on the Q8FN as they do on the OLED. So that's, that's something to say here. Like as I'm looking at the two kind of flash off here, I obviously know that they're not the same level of peak brightness, but it feels that way because of the way OLED's black levels are just really doing so great right now and the way Sony is actually tone mapping for the luminance of the lightning to hone in and brighten that up to where it needs to be. And that's one of the impressive things with Sony this year. They really focused on that part of it. So even though it's an OLED, it's not as bad. I mean, yeah, that's every bit as bright. It's really bright, man. That was enjoyable on both TVs. I'd call that a tie, man. Hey, although the color blue, again, too dark on uh, on the uh, Sony there. Uh, so in essence, I'm going to try to wrap this up. I'm not going to try to keep it going for too long. I know you guys are probably struggling already through this. What's the takeaway here? So the takeaway is this. Both TVs have a lot they offer. I think you'll be happy with either one. I do. I think the Sony A8G is the best OLED on the market right now today, period. I think I need to buy another HDMI splitter because it keeps dropping out. Or it's probably the cable I have on there. Probably old cable. But either way, you guys are seeing in real time the black levels of the Q8. Very good. On par with OLED. Uh, in a lot of scenes, sometimes contrast does get better in the brighter scenes, but overall, they're very comparable TVs. If I had to pick a winner, I would have to draw this one down the middle and call this a tie. A very, very, very hair slight edge towards OLED because of those darker scenes. That's really it, but overall, in the brighter scenes, it goes to the Q8, so that's why I have to tie it because, again, the Q8 can't get as dark as OLED, but the OLED can't get as bright as the Q8, and they complement each other very well. And I think having them both, I get the best of both worlds. Like right now, the brightness is amazing on the Q8. I just don't like how dark the lightning is. It doesn't look like lightning where on OLED, it kind of looks like lightning, you know? So that's the thing I would hone in on. And also skin tones better on OLED. The pink and the cheeks and all that stuff, that's looking a lot better. But overall, it's up to you. I wanna know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Who's your winner and why? Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.